All right, Alexander, let's talk about stagflation. We did a video a couple of days ago, and we talked about inflation on the rise again. And now we have some more data, which points to the fact that uh, we may be in a period of stagflation now. What is going on? Well, it's very interesting, and it should be really very concerning, because um, th there's now, I think, strong indicators pointing to a rise in inflation over the next couple of months. I mean, the, 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 all that talk, as we discussed in that video, in our recent video about, you know, inflation falling and falling fast, that's all going into reverse, that the inflation, inflationary pressures appear to be intensifying again. And this is even before energy prices start to grow, as they likely will over the course of this year, with China opening up. But at the same time as that's happening, there's now also growing signs that the West is heading into a recession. And these are the more long-lead indicators. But they're starting to stack up, and they're pointing increasingly towards a significant recession by the end of this year. In the United States, where manufacturing uh, production is falling, and of course Germany's probably already in recession, um, before long I suspect the Eurozone will be. And of course Britain, I'm not even going to talk about Britain, is almost too upsetting a story, but suffice to say that the situation there looks bad as well. Now, a recession where there is also inflation, is not supposed to happen. When there's a recession, usually, demand falls and prices fall too. The situation where you have prices continuing to rise, even as recession builds and gets worse, is something which, until the 1970s, most economists didn't think could happen. It did happen in the 1970s, and we seem to be drifting into that position again. And it's when it happened in the 1970s, it proved extremely difficult to break out of. And we could see what is causing some of the problems. Now, in our previous video, we talked about the problems of the energy market, which are very real, the supply problems there the problems that the sanctions have created, and those are very real. We're not, you know, I'm not, you're not going back on any of what we said there. But there is another problem that's starting to emerge, which is that Western debt levels are at phenomenally high levels, including debts that the central banks owe. Believe it or not, central banks in the West have incurred debts over the last 30 years. 20 years, the, the, well, certainly especially since the 2008 crisis. Western governments are massively in debt, all of them. I mean, Britain, Germany, Japan, the United States, France. I think of those, only Germany still has debt below 100%, sovereign debt below 100% of GDP. All of the others have debt above 100%. Of GDP and Germany's going there, and Japan, I believe it's more like 250% of GDP. So the interest on their debt is enormous. The interest on household debts now is rising. There's clear signs of severe problems in the mortgage markets and the housing markets in several of the big economies in Britain, in France, in the United States, to a lesser extent in Germany. Um, and the problem is, because inflation remains high, central banks can't reduce the interest rates. So they're caught. They're creating, in effect, a inflationary recession. They have to keep the interest rates high to try to contain the inflation. They can't push the interest rates high enough to end the inflation, because that would take, turn the recession, the pending recession, into an outright depression. 
So we're getting this very complicated, very protracted problem, that we, like the one we had in the 70s, where we have both rising prices against a backdrop of contracting economies. And that's a very, very bad situation to be in. Very, very difficult to get out of if it um, takes hold as it seems it is. Okay, so, you know, everything you're, you're telling me runs contrary to the messaging that's coming out of collective West leaders. For example, uh, we're going to sanction China. Doesn't sound like they're in a very strong position to be sanctioning China right now. Um, Olaf Schultz said that Germany has uh, completely uh, liberated itself from its dependence on Russian oil, gas, and coal. We're, we're out, he said. Everything is great. We're out. We're free now. All is good. That's what Olaf Schultz said. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen said just yesterday that the EU has done an incredible job of uh, moving away from its dependence on Russian energy. All is good. I mean, how do you... <laughs> well, I mean, there are two things to say. Firstly, What's they're going on? To, well, there's three things to say. One, either they're lying or delusional. That's the first thing to say. Uh, the, say the, the second thing to say is that, you know, they got through the winter by exacerbating in the long term the inflationary crisis. And I had to think to understand because, because they poured money into the system. And we actually talked about this when we were discussing this before, if you remember. We said that, you know, all this money they're spending on sustaining demand, keeping up, uh, keeping things going through the winter, paying people's energy bills, that kind of thing. It's done two things. It's weakened government budgetary positions and it's kept inflation high. In fact, inflation could be rising. It's one of the reasons probably why inflation is rising is because they're having to spend money to try to keep these problems that they've created in the energy system at bay. But of course, they haven't been able to eliminate entirely all the problems of higher energy costs. Energy costs are still double what they were before the, you know, the, the, the chain of crises that we've been through over the last few years. And that's now having a major effect on German industry. It's having an effect on British industry, such as such of it as there is. We're seeing factories closing. We're seeing some factories relocating, some to the United States, some to the Far East. So we have higher inflation as a result of what they've achieved and lower output as a result of what they've achieved. And government debt has exploded even more, which is one reason why we see more inflation and interest rates having to remain high even as the economy goes down. And at the same time as they're being delusional, they're also lying because they must all of them know that, in fact, they haven't freed themselves of Russian energy dependence. They are still importing Russian oil. They're importing Russian oil through all these various complicated middlemen and third parties. They're now importing diesel from North Africa, which is ultimately coming from Russia, again, through all these complicated third parties. They've actually started to increase imports of Russian gas through the one remaining pipeline that's left, which passes through Ukraine, by the way, um, because their um, gas reserves are starting to fall now back to the sort of crisis levels that they were in before they started massively buying up Russian gas last summer. And, of course, <laughs> all of these problems <laughs> remain, ultimately, the energy problems which they've created for themselves, remain unresolved. So they, uh, they, bought their, they, they, they spent their way through the winter. They were lucky because the winter was warm. But we're now starting to see the cost. The price is stagflation. 
And they're going to compound that if they do what they're threatening to do, um, which is sanction China. They're going to multiply that hundredfold. And China knows this. Russia knows this. How how does the EU, how, how does the collective West get out of this while still trying to keep the facade of, of 10 sanctions packages and we're free from our uh, dependence on Russia and we're giving warnings to China? I mean, sooner or later, this these lies are going to get exposed. Well, indeed, yes. Or they're just going to the destroy their economies. Well, that's the trouble. And that's the trouble, though, because, of course, the, the problem is when you start telling lies... You have to double down. If you're going to, unless you finally own up and tell the truth, in which case, of course, as you say, you're exposed, you have no real option but to go online. And that's what they're doing, in effect. I mean, they just have to go on. I mean, l- lies grow like rabbits. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, they breed like rabbits. One, one lie leads to another lie. So if you're going to really go around telling everybody we've liberated ourselves from Russian energy, which, of course, you haven't, then you've got to pre- go on pretending that you've liberated yourself from Russian energy. And in order to make that seem convincing, you have to buy even more oil from the Indians or from the North Africans at even more inflated prices. In fact, what you're doing in that case is you're weakening your leverage because you're no longer bargaining it from a straightforward position. And your seller knows how it will suss out very quickly, how weak your position actually is. So, I mean, that, that's, that's the problem. Um, and, of course, they can threaten China. Now, they think that they can say that because apparently the Chinese have given, have repeated, they've already said, you know, that we're not, for the moment, planning to send weapons to Russia. So Olaf Scholz can come along, say China has given this promise that they won't sell, send um weapons to Russia. No, so, I mean, this is, he's making it up again. I mean, the Chinese have said it's against our policy to do that. They never promised him that they wouldn't do it. I mean, that's absolutely not what the Chinese about, are about. The Chinese know perfectly well that Schultz is bluffing about sanctions against China. And I repeat again what I've said so many times. The first law of war is don't march on Moscow. The first law of diplomacy is don't bluff Beijing because your bluff will always be called. The Chinese will at some point call this bluff. Of that, I am sure. All right. uh, Final question. How do they how do you get out of this? Well, you don't. Can they get out of this? No, they can't get out of this. What they should do, and I think this is the only thing they can realistically do, is that they should start thinking about their retirement plans. <laughs> I'm sorry to be a little, to be as straightforward about it as that, because realistically, I mean, um, the more they cling on, the more damage they do. And the SPD party is already in serious trouble, apparently, in Germany. That's Schultz's party. And um, the Conservatives are in very serious trouble in Britain. I mean, as I said, they, they, need, they need to start thinking of, how they exit the scene so that whoever comes in their place can start picking the pieces together because realistically these people are so compromised now that they can't do it. I mean, we've discussed in another video um, the possibility that Biden and Schultz, when Schultz went on this somewhat mysterious trip to Washington, talked about some kind of negotiation with the Russians. But, of course, the Russians know how weak their position is, both on the battlefields and in economic terms. They're going to strike a very hard bargain as well. Maybe that's the one thing left. By the way, in my last video on my own channel, I discussed the, there's been a whole string of news about the Russian economy. And all of the indications are that it's gathering it's accelerating. The, the growth picture there is accelerating. And whereas in the West, prices have resumed their growth, in Russia, they're either flat or falling. 
Didn't Bloomberg come out with an article yesterday or the other day and, yeah. and once again blast the Russian economy? Yeah. yeah. But, but I they think did this- people but then I, I Yeah, they did it. And then I was uh, I was looking at some of the comments as to how Bloomberg came up with their numbers and I mean they're for lack of a better word, they're just making stuff up. Yes, that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, the, the, I, I mean, I you're you're absolutely right. I mean, they said you know there's a Russian energy revenues have collapsed by forty eight percent, and you're absolutely right. Yeah, methodology, yeah. which is it, yeah forty eight percent or something like that. So, yeah, uh, yes, and they've done. They're doing this. They're doing this continuously all the time. We get articles from Bloomberg, clearly intended to keep everybody on side with the with the sanctions, and you know we've discussed this many times. The actual figures coming out of Russia tell a completely different story. And when you examine the methodology behind these Bloomberg articles, and we've had a whole string of them now, they always, they're, they're completely wrong. But, you know, you can always say these things. Some people will believe you. Anyway, that's that's what... That's the reality. That's 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 reality, and there's 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 there's, there's what you want to believe. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bloomberg's doing more harm than they're doing good. Absolutely, and they keep they're, people they're, invested in 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 this project Ukraine and project everything else, lockdown and everything else that they have going on, and uh, it just does more more damage because you know the leaders they can cite the Bloomberg article and say, you see. Our policies are working, but they just dig a deeper and deeper hole. Absolutely. And can I say they're also they're also trashing themselves because Bloomberg achieved the position that it did because it provided it, it, it supposedly Bloomberg himself identified this niche for reliable business statistics and Bloomberg's whole you know, reputation is that it provides, you know, reliable business news based on proper methodologies and rigorous data. And when they're not doing that, when they're pursuing what is essentially a political objective, well, you know, that that is going to damage, that is going to damage their reputation long term. But, you know, that's what they want to do. That's where we are. All right. Uh, We will leave it there at theduran.locals.com. Yep. I just want to say just one more yeah. West, just one more Western institution. If Bloomberg is an institution that has subverted itself, I mean that's that's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I saw the article the other day, and I was just like, what are, what are these guys talking about? And you know, I I saw the comments and and the feedback to the article, and everyone called them out on it, like. Everyone, and we're not talking pro-Russia people or anything like that, but you could see that people were like, these guys are using fake fake methods. They're, they are making stuff up. Yes, yes. and that's Bloomberg. And that's Bloomberg, yeah. as I said, uh, doing that to its audience, which is principally business people. <laughs> business people are the most difficult people. All right, we'll leave it there. Uh, the Duran.locals.com. We are also on Rockfin as well. And go to the Duran shop. Uh, 10% off, use the code. Good day. Take care.